from the desk at Old Mates. You're watching Backyard Tech. Righto. So for the past couple of weeks or so now, Old Mate here at Backyard Tech's been running Sophos XG Firewall. And to be dead set brutally honest, in the dead set fed income department, Sophos XG Firewall is unbelievably brilliant. It is rock solid. It is stable. However, I've been having some problems with it. My opinion of it is it's fantastic. But it doesn't suit me here at home for reasons I'll keep to myself. Earlier this week, I made a decision and started toying with the idea of returning to a firewall program, or operating system I should say, I ran some time ago. Judging by the fact of the improvements and how it runs now, it would appear as though it's going to suit me better here at home than any other firewall I've been using. It's system building time here at the Backyard Tech Channel. This one, we're going to build up Old Mate's new PF Sense box. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in, it is system building time here at the Backyard Tech Channel for TGIF Friday morning and we're going to build up my new PF Sense box. Now, there is going to be an almighty amount of abuse and nastiness hurled at me over this because what I'm planning to do is going to be absolutely looked on as an abomination. But... I'm doing this my way and for myself. In the IT acquisitions video uploaded earlier, I showed you that I picked up a HP Compact 6000 Pro SFF for free from my mate at his computer business. And to be honest, it is going to be for me the perfect PF Sense box. Now, there's going to be people out there say, no, 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 no. You got it all wrong, backyard. You got it all. You've got to run it on a Core i7 with two one terabyte SSDs and 120 gig of RAM, because otherwise it's not gonna work. No, 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 no. You read the HCL of it, right? Which I do, I read HCLs all the time to make sure my hardware is compatible with the operating system or what I'm gonna use it for. And frankly, that HP Compact 6000 is gonna be more than sufficient for protecting me here at home. So the notion that it's got to run on a Core i5 or Core i7 with 128 gig of RAM and two SSDs is junk. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna swap out some of the hardware that's in the existing Sophos box. We're gonna swap out the hard drive that's in the new HP box. And then we're gonna test out the hardware, make sure all the hardware works. And then in the subsequent video coming up today, we will install, set up, and have a bit of a sticky beak at the new PF Sense CE 2.4.4. But before we get to setting up Sophos, we've got to build up the system. So let's get into it. Okay, so I'll just rip the power out of this because I don't really care about it. The old Sophos box, the new PF box. So what I've got to do here undo these damn tangles. I'm going to have to do this two-handed. Hold on. We need to get the RAM out of here, into there. And then I've got a hard drive here. This is just a 500 gig Hitachi SATA 2. Nothing really special. drive out bugger allen keys I'm never going. oh no flatheads that'll be all right i can use those right up so let's get this one out of here as well 
get this RAM out because he's only given me, well, he's only given me a gig of RAM, has he? Or two gig of RAM or something. What do we got? One gig. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Nothing runs on two gig of RAM these days. All right. Let's um, swap all this out. Okay, two gig. So that'll be all right. I'm trying to fit RAM sometimes. Whoa. Oh, it's the other way around. Upside down, Mr. Squiggle. There we go. Mm, hang on. Old mate's a dummy. The help me. That's not the right damn RAM. That's freaking... 6400 this is 10600 uh that's problematic all right let me go and see if i've got any 10600 ram lying around all right well i found a small stick of four gig so i'm hoping that'll work so that's a total of six gig of ram that'll be all right i know i know you're supposed to run a firewall on a core i7 with you know 128 gig of ram but not all of us have high-end computers that we can just use on a firewall all right next thing to do is swap the mounts out from this drive to this drive because 160 gig waste of space i want a 500 gig hard drive all right well it's not pretty i'm just going to put two mounting screws in this because like i said i don't really care how this looks or how it functions or anything like that i'm just want to get it in place so that is exactly what I'm going to do if it'll go in yeah that's not going to work is it because that's just going to vibrate like buggery damn it that means I've got to put all four in all right, hang on. All right, well, I've put all four mounting brackets in now. So I'm just going to do that. All right. All right, I'll get the Ethernet card out. Oops. There's the Ethernet card in. All right. So now what we need to do is apply power and uh, test it all out. All right. All plugged up. Let's see if this boots. Here's a bit of a tech tip for you. If you are using an extension lead, make sure the other end of it's bloody well plugged in. That's good. That's very good. That booted up nice and quickly. Whoa. That's not what I want. There we go. All right, system information. 
so we have a total of four gig so we've got two two gigs so we've got three two oh no that's right yeah two one gigs and a two gig so four gig of ram we've got an intel core 2 duo e75 at 2.93 gig so that'll be look to be honest i think that's going to be all right seriously i think it's going to be all right because see what have we got we've got a hp compact 6000 pro at 2.93 gig okay so the long and short of it's going to be people are going to have an s fit with me because a i'm not running it on a core i5 or core i7 b i haven't got nearly enough ram and c i'm running a 500 gig sata drive but to be brutally honest it's going to be all right. So what I need to do now is check the storage system. Device configuration. And I've got to change the storage options. Oh, it is, it is AHCI. Okay, that's good. Boot order. Yep, that's right. That's right. That's... Uh, power on options. Yep, that's fine. Um, device options is good. Multiprocessor enabled. F10 for that. Yep, that's right. Onboard devices. Yep, PCI devices. Ethernet controller. Yep. OS power management. Yep. Hardware power, power management. Yep, that's fine. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. config is good okay well there we go so uh well the only other thing i've got to do is set the date and time don't i is that actually the right time no that is that is miles out it's actually oh nine oh oh nine 02 and what is the day? I don't even know what the damn date is today. Oh no, that's right. Yep, no, it is right. So it's got the right time and the right date. 6th of September, F10, and we're good to go. So there we are. The new PF Sense box is done. So the only other thing I've got to do now is actually you know what we should do in this we should actually test whether pf's going to see both nicks hang on all right so here is my pf sense this is on this horrifically slow one micro bit per hour dvd hunk of optical outrageous 1900s technology you know i think these were made in about 1905 weren't they that's about how old they are aren't they um, and remember, these things only transfer at one bit per hour. So this could take about, you know, four days to install PFSense. All right, so let's make sure PF's actually going to boot in. So remember, this could take 14 days to install. We're just doing this as a test because obviously I'm going to go out and install it once we get it into the cabinet. I just want to see whether or not it'll actually install. 
Okay, well, it is about 48 days later now. You can see how long this is taking. I mean, you, you're doing one bit per hour. You know, optical media, it's just so... You know, you can make 14 cups of coffee by the time you actually boot into this. Okay, well, we're now at 28 days on the install. And you see how slow it is. I mean, you know, optical media, it's 1900s technology, you know. DVDs were made in the 1910s. <laughs> I love doing this because everyone's like, oh, no, the only way you can install anything is you've got to install it off the internet. It's so much faster. You've got to install it off USB 3. Well, this thing's not USB 3. And how am I going to install it off the net when I haven't sorted out the network cards? So, oh dear, all right, 47, no, 67 days later now, we're still going. So we've been record making this video now for 67 days. All right, it's picked up both. It's got no network yet, but it's picked up both. Oh, well, that's good. So EM... EM0 and ENC0 are the two thingos. Right, 197 days later now. And this this is the problem. I mean, this is why people don't use DVDs. It just takes, you know, half a year to install everything. You know, you've got to remember, we're doing one bit per hour here. So, you know, it's going to take a long time to actually do anything. Actually, I might be right. This could take two years to install at this rate. All right. Twelve and a half years later, coming off this terrible 1910s technology, it looks like this will actually, this will, yeah, it is, it's going to work. All right, good. Uh, ZFS. All right, so it's actually going to work. All right. Well, apologies, this video has taken 12 years to produce coming off this optical media, you know, hunk of junk. Oh, because it's locked in, isn't it? So there we are. All right, well, that's good. That's really good. So stick around because uh, once I get this installed and uh, get the internet back up and running, we will have a sticky beak at the new PFSense 2.2.4. Have a good one, guys. Cheers.